Oh, hey there, how you doing? I didn't see you come in. How you been? Listen, I'm glad you stopped by. I wanted to review that story you told me. I was telling it to another friend, and it's such a great story. Wanted to make sure I had it right. You're at the office there, and um, you had a meeting with Melissa from sales. She comes in, and unfortunately, you can see she's distracted. It looks like she's been crying. She's got the two, you know, puffy eyes, and kind of red. And you talk to her about it, and she says, well, yeah, I did get some bad news. The doctor just came in and told me the results of a test, a very serious medical condition, and they said I tested positive for it. Well, obviously, that is bad news. So um, you console her and comfort her and ask for some more information. Well, apparently, she tells you the name of the test. You go into the Google machine, you Google it up, and you see that there's a 5% false positive rate. So you continue with your conversation, and when she leaves, she's feeling a little more upbeat, a little more spirited, has a little more confidence. She has her chin up. And I told her, why was that? What did you tell her? I mean, obviously you consoled her. Was there something specific you told her to make her feel better? And you said, yes. You advised her of the false positive paradox. And I guess I'm a little confused. What's a false positive paradox? Well, apparently, you explained to me, when the incidence of something, of an event, is less than the false positive rate, or the chance of a type two error, or type one error, I should say, um, you have the false positive paradox. Okay, well, tell me what that means. Well, a type one error, you explained to me, is when you assume the status quo is gonna continue, and you, you make a conclusion based on your evidence that there's a change in the status quo, and it turns out there's a mistake, that's an error. An example, is, as you explained to me, is the United States justice system, where we uh, conclude that the the person brought up on charges is innocent, and the district attorney, prosecution, has to you know, pull the evidence, display evidence that the person's guilty. And if the jury concludes the person is guilty, the change in the status quo, guilty, and it turns out they're innocent, that's a type one error. Okay, I think I kind of get that. What's that got to do with your friend Melissa? And um, so you explain, well, you kind of got to do the math. Oh, we're gonna do the math, well then, let me get ready for the math. Hold on just a moment. Okay, so what's the math in this situation? Well, you explain, of a thousand people, 2% have the disease. That's 20 people that have the disease. And of the 980 people that don't have the disease, 5% or 49 are gonna come back with a positive test. So in totality, there's 69 people that are gonna come back with a positive. 20 with the disease, 49 without the disease. Total of 69. 20, those that have it, as a percentage of 69, all of the people is only 28.9%. So less than 29% of the people actually have the disease that actually tested positive. That's what made Melissa feel a little bit better. That was how you able to explain to her that maybe things aren't quite as bad as you had suggested. Well, what happened? Well, you explained to me that fortunately she did not have the disease. They did some further tests, investigation. She doesn't have the disease. And actually she got married last year. They are gonna have a, a child in the fall and they're considering naming that child after you. I said, you know why? Because you are one ace accountant. We should give you a round of applause. All right. Hey, I'll see you again, okay?